All right, folks, today on the bench, I have the IC3 connectors. Uh, it's interchangeable with this for the uh, IC5, which is the same thing, just bigger. Um, I was out of necessity doing a battery solder job, and I, I, I try to, I really don't use these that much because they're more expensive. Everybody's familiar with the, the EC version. You can find generics, uh, not brand, but generics of the um, the ECs. And uh, you got that situation with the thing, and then you get this bag of bullets. I'm going to say that's good because it's cheap, but it's not better. Like, if you're familiar with the new A-Bus a or A-Mass, A-Mass, um, that, that they make these XD um xt or X, xt 60s and they have this little cap on the end and spectrum i believe now has copied them with this cap on the end this cap changes everything about the, the 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 heat shrink i would always solder a joint forget the heat shrink have to put it on so this solves that anywho get into it so this is my battery in question. Um, just when I had, I got this P38 project I'm about to get up and the battery that it, like the guy I got it from had the battery stuffed in it for God knows how long. And uh, this battery doesn't even have a name plate or anything. I don't know what brand it is. I don't know what kind of C rating. Plus it's old. It still has good voltage. So I'm tempted, but uh, on the same note, kind of afraid. So this battery barely fits in there. It's a 3S. Uh, 3300 it barely fits in the cavity of the p38 so i got to get something close because I, I have this 3000 and it fits in there easily but you know I, the, the difference between 3000 and 3200 is maybe trivial you know what i'm saying um but the thing about that is this is 259 grams this one is only 193 grams so it's like man it's, i'm gonna have to add so much weight so I uh, looked around, checked everything I had. I had these 4200 120C bad boys. So, you know, I figured out the more output, the better. So I don't commit to a, a battery as far as changing a plug most of the time, especially because this little adapter that you can get, I love this little Venom one. Uh, Venom one. Um, it's just a straight pass through, you know, solder plug to solder plug. And I think the most, the least amount of loss you can have, because you don't have to worry about the, the wire in the middle. So I'll use these on these XT60s to um, kind of adapt it to a Spectrum or to EC to IC uh, plug. So in this case, the cabin is kind of small. I didn't want that extra bulk trying to make the turn. Uh, I put it in there and it, it was definitely not, it was making a canopy push up. So I was like, all right, let me go ahead and put some. I was going to put the blue boys on, right? Because, you know, being cheap with it. But I was like, you know what? These batteries, I don't have anything else this size. I might as well go ahead and put the, the expensive ones on there. Um, and these here, I use a lot of time for, for like a, a, an insertion tool. So if I'm soldering this side, I might stick this in here to to hold it. Most of the time, I end up using the uh, the cheap AMAS plugs. Of, like This looks like a Spectrum, but it's, it's one of the smart ones um, for, for, for them. I think... Uh, the name of the company for that is, is, is Jens Ace, I believe, who uses that kind of thing. But anyway, I take these little ones and then I stick the uh, the plug that I want to use inside of there to hold it. So that's kind of the situation I got out here. I'm going to use this uh, IC3 plug. I got it stuck into this uh, XT60, XT60H-M for whatever reason that means. So... Uh, I put it in my jig. I got it facing with the positive up. I got the positive on the bench, so then I'm gonna lock it down in my jig. I let it stick out the jig a little bit so I have a little more working room before I hit, you know, metal. So at this point, I got this jig just to kind of hold the wire for the desolder. And important step, important tip that if I can't get any tips that are important to you to come across, I hate dealing with the ones that like this that don't have the cap. The one I just showed you. These are the newer style, and they have this cap. You take the cap off. So get the ones with the cap for, for ease of everything, right? You, you got a nice little bit of relief in there where you can come out. We don't have to worry about the wire being so stripped, so tight. Um, and with, with heat shrink, you didn't have to worry about it either, but it's just another hassle. Then if you heat the wire up too much, the heat shrink shrinks on you. Then you got to desolder, put a new heat shrink. Trust me, if you've done this at all, you know. But one important tip about that is put this thing right here, right in front of you. 
because you'll desolder this and then next thing you know you'll be soldering it on and you'll get the whole joint and it'll be the best joint you ever done in your entire life and you'll realize you don't have this cap on so having said that we'll go ahead on and get into heating the iron up get my tools positioned kind of get your your needle nose or your your for I, I prefer not to use these uh forceps because if you use these they lock down on the wire and they, they you, when you're trying to just hold it they'll end up locking down now the wires compressed too much so now you got to put the soldering iron down to release this so i stay away from these for the most part i, I like a needle nose I, I might get one that doesn't have um ridges in it there is some like that because i don't know the ridges probably help but anyway this works so this is not a professional solder job i didn't get a a degree from soldering at mit this is just showing you how to use these plugs um the ic not the ec i've done a video on ecs with the blue boys where you have to pop them in this is a different method altogether so uh my iron is heated up i'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the tip very well inside of my uh my little cleaner all right i look at my tip a very important step uh, I do like to take and squirt a little bit of this cleaner flux on there. And I do not, I only took the heat shrink off of one side. You see, so the black is still on. In case I make a mistake, it's going to fall down, then I might have a folly. So I leave the back, the black part on there until I'm ready to do that side. So step one, I'll grab it. Try not to squeeze down on my needle nose because that's going to be kind of a tendency that you'd want to do. And I'm going to get it in there and I'm wiggling the solder iron. I hope that comes through good on video. I'm just wiggling it and I feel the solder um, relieving. All right. So now I'm going to just start wiggling the wire with the solder and iron moving with the wire. So when it comes out, they come out together and it doesn't slide against the iron, if that makes sense. All right. Now it came out of there. I'm going to put my solder iron in the holder. I'm still maintaining this red wire, even though it's the black is covered. So I don't have to worry about a folly there. I'm going to release that from the jig. You could even, you know what, sometimes I just leave this in the jig. I'm going to turn it around so I can get to the other side. Um, that's why it's important to keep this there. Put this on. All right. So now, instead of being tempted to take both wires off, I, I would have to, you know, sometimes I would just tape the other wire. And, and to avoid all that, just leave it connected. Leave the black on. You don't have to ever worry about them touching because, you know, you have positive control of this wire for one. But even if you didn't, there's nothing it can hit. Look, I don't care because there's heat shrink on it. And I'm safe. So I'm um, going to clean my tip again. I'm going to put the littlest amount of flux on there just to get it kind of promote heating. I'm going to grab my wire so I don't have to fumble with that once I'm in work. And I'm going to hold it on here. And I got it a nice pull. So now I've made a mistake because I can't pull forward enough. You see that? I can't reach it. So make sure you have this set up before you get started. So I'm going to just slide the, the jig onto the wood and work it like that. In, in this case, I probably prefer to get the wood out of here altogether because the jig has feet on it and, and it, it doesn't slide very easily, especially on this workbench material. So that's going to give me a little bit more pushing. All right, so I'm going to heat it up again. And uh, I would have stuck the wire inside the plug, but this is a used plug and it already had plenty of solder in it. So then I'm going to just kind of get it on there. Make sure it's a nice continuous pull across. You might just take your iron and rub around like that just to make sure you see a nice smooth puddle. And once you got that nice smooth puddle, it's gonna dry up into, I don't know why some, like I have to like do some research on solders myself, but some solders end up hazing and some shine. I prefer the ones that shine, but uh, I don't even know if I'm getting this good, but I think I am. So I'm gonna, yeah, I put this light on there. So you see, I got a good joint. Not the best joint I've ever done, to be honest with you. And this, the solder that was on there is that hazy stuff. And I feel like the hazy stuff does not give me the best uh, results. So now I'm going to release this one from the other jig just uh, so I can stick the tip of a exacto in there. And the important part about this is you don't want to cut into that because you'll slice the wire. And you'll have to strip your stuff all the way back to uh, accommodate that. So uh, having done it before giving you the experience so you don't have to waste your time doing it yourself because i've done it in the past um and usually it comes off in one piece easy but this time it's not cooperating so i'm gonna go ahead and grab it with a needle nose if i can i cannot so then the four steps grabs really tight i can grab that and got it right out of there and it's stuck in there i'll leave that for after the video to get off 
All right, I'm gonna lock this down in the jig. I'm gonna lock this down in the jig. Now, important, you probably at this point wanna slide this up so that you do not remember to put that on. I mean, you do not forget to remember. All right, the iron is still hot. I tend to turn uh, my iron off in between jobs too because it just, you know, it ends up heating it up too much. You, you start ruining your tips. So uh, I didn't turn it off that time. Uh, for the sake of this video to be quicker but uh, I would normally do it all right I'm gonna heat this up same motion it's starting to wiggle a little bit so we'll just let it get fully heated and then I'm gonna start pulling the wire and the soldering iron out at this so if you don't you'll slip off like I just did there but I was actually doing it but it released and still popped off of there so know that that's a hazard now I got this cap in my way of soldering it so then that makes me not forget it I'm gonna sit this cap on I mean, even current day, I'll still solder these things and then get it all nice and then forget that cap isn't on. So, um, I know if you've done it before, you probably already know. So, I'm, as they say, preaching to the choir. Alrighty, get this kind of lined up, get you a little bit closer. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of that flux and squeeze on there just to promote the heating. Uh, clean my tip one last time. Get a little bubble of solder on there just because I want to see because this is the shiny stuff and uh, all right I burned off my flux grab the wire at appropriate distance it's heated up and I can get that set in there and set right in easy so then I took the cold wire and set it in there and, and that kind of took them into all right now it slid in like that's the perfect situation where you get to slide in like that and I got my continuous puddle and I'm satisfied. That's a, that's a really tight, good joint, a really hot joint. You don't want to make sure you don't get a cold solder joint because a cold solder joint will just crack right out. It'll look beautiful and then crack out. So um, I'm not satisfied with this fully. So I might just rub the soldering iron, get it, rub it on the side of here. And yep, just even that out. Yep, everything looks nice now. So that is it for that part. Now this plug, it, the purpose of this is to keep this, your plug that you're using, this kind of keeps some of that main heat from uh, ruining this plug. Because you'll, you'll get too much heat on these sometimes. Like I did a really fast joint and I usually tend to do them quickly. But if you're taking too long to solder because you're kind of not good at it, that's, that's cool. That's, that's like part of it, you know. Nobody's going to be perfect at this stuff. You got to practice. So don't worry about getting too hot when you have this inside of here. But if you just do it with just this plug by itself... These things are going to warp, and then when you try to insert a plug in, it won't insert because the uh, the reciprocals, especially for the other side, like if you're soldering this side, the bird side, those little pins will be all off when you try to stick one in, and it won't work. So then you'll have to redo everything. So to avoid that, a little extra tip is to stick this onto another plug. That way it's seated, and it's not going to move anywhere. They're locked in, and then you get your solder joint done, and then you click your cap on, and now you got a nice joint. There you go finished product so flip this off and now i'm ready to fly pulley from the bench thanks for watching